Good morning, media friends. Welcome to the Tuesday press briefing by the Chief Executive before the Exec Executive Council. Later on, the Chief Executive will make opening remarks and then we will take questions. Because of the epidemic, please maintain social distancing and keep your mask on. Chief Executive, please. Media friends and Hong Kong members of the public, good morning. First of all, about um, the epidemic and also the second phase relaxation of social distancing measures um, within this week. As we all know, in the past week, Hong Kong's epidemic situation remained stable. Every day, the new number of COVID cases via PCR test or RAT remained um, at the level of 200 to 300. Because of that, we consider that the risk at present is um, under control. As we have announced that on this first day, the 19th of May, we will have the second stage of relaxation. It will be implemented on, t uh, on schedule. In terms of the details, previously the FEHB has made um, announcements. I will um, repeat them. Now the measures involve the following. First, for catering premises, the dining service hours will be extended to 11.59 p.m., that is, uh, before midnight. Earlier on, um, the number of people allowed per table um, was extended to eight, so the number will um, remain the same. However, for banquets, the maximum number of um, participants will be, um, increased, uh, from, um, will be increased to 150. And also, pubs and bars will be allowed to reopen, and um, business hours will be um, um, until uh, 11.59 with uh, four persons uh, per table, and also they can operate as a capacity of 75% of the um, premises. Thirdly, for those uh, scheduled premises uh, which were uh, still closed uh, in phase one will be reopened, including bathhouses, uh, party rooms, uh, nightclubs, karaoke, mahjong, tingao premises, and also um, um, cruisers. Still, they will be subject to um, restriction in terms of uh, capacity and so on. Fourth, for those premises uh, which were allowed to reopen during phase one, they, there will be further relaxation, mainly involving the cap capacity allowed. Previously, um, they were 50% um, or 75%, mostly 50%. Now, they will be um, increased to 85%, including cinemas, uh, performance uh, venues, um, museums, uh, religious uh, premises, and um, so on. For cinemas, which have already been extended, um, expanded to 85%, uh, drinking and eating will also be allowed. The last measure is about uh, mask weathering, wearing. Previously, for um, um, intensive exercises um, um, outdoor, um, uh, no mask will be required. In the next phase, for uh, indoor premises and also uh, gym, gyms uh, which uh, meet the um, air exchange um, requirements, no mask will be allowed. Uh, no mask will be uh, required as well. Please, please refer to the um, press release issued by the FEHB on the 3rd of May. Now, I understand um, media friends and uh, members of the public um, um, wonder what, what stage um, we are in. Of course, we have um, long passed the uh, peak of the fifth wave. However, we are at a um, static low level. For eight or 10 days, we have not seen any um, obvious um, decrease or increase. At the same time, we have seen um, cluster um, clusters appearing. In the community, there is still um, transmission of virus. And also, um, the transmission has caused uh, clusters, so there is a risk. So far, um, clusters have uh, occurred um, in Crowded places with um, uh, with, um, with with uh, without mask um, activities, including um, the restaurants and also a, a 
beloved room. It is reported that um, the uh, billiard players in the uh, venue uh, have taken off their masks for drinking at certain points. In the next stage, there will be more activities allowed without um, mask we uh, wearing. So we have to be very careful. If you are if you are not drinking or doing sports, you should put your mask on, especially. Um, it is better to wear a KN95, a face-fitting uh, mask to prevent infection. So we still have 200 to 300 cases. We have been doing a lot. We have been very proactive in um, our efforts in early identification and early treatment. We haven't slowed down our work in this regard. One example is um, sewage uh, examination. And once we have identified um, samples with high viral load, we would take actions. Now, uh, for, the hun for the 100 examples uh, per day, the um, positive rate is some 30 percent compared with a month ago. We found a um, virus in almost every sample. So the situation has obviously improved. Every morning around 7 a.m. we would receive um, the report about the samples with um, higher uh, viral load and we would take actions immediately. And also we have resumed um, compulsory uh, testing in the community. There have been some uh, 40s uh, CTNs um, operations. So every day, um, the community testing centers are doing some 60,000 to 70,000 uh, tests. Third, we have um, the RAT uh, requirements. We are one of the few places that we require some uh, one seventh of our population to do a RAT every day. The daily RAT requirements um, involve some uh, one million people in Hong Kong. So these are mostly students and um, teaching staff in schools. That accounts for 900,000 people and also for residents and um, staff in care homes, frontline civil servants, HA staff, as well as um, people with high exposure risk, for example, those working in airports and quarantine hotels. They are all subject to the daily RAT requirements. So at some places, and there are no more tests, however, in Hong Kong, we are still finding out cases via PCR tests and RATs. So given that backdrop, it is uh, reasonable to have um, Two to three hundred cases each day. There is no need to worry, and we can move on to the second stage of relaxation of social distancing measures. However, like I said, we cannot let our guard down because of the decrease in the number of cases. It. Um, it ties. Uh, it is in. It is um, aligned with our original intention. That is not to overload our public health care system with um, the surging number of uh, COVID-19 patients. The situation in hospital hospitals are now are uh, reassuring. Today, there are some 700 COVID patients in hospitals. For patients with more serious conditions in ICUs, uh, there are two. So we have a lot of spare isolation beds for COVID patients. We also have a large number of community isolation facilities in reserve, as well as um, holding cent um, temporary holding centers uh, for elderly people. It is because of um, the control over the epidemic that we can resume um, economic activities as well as um, 
meets a people's aspiration to resume to normal life. The situation is also happening overseas. From the figures we have at the Hong Kong International Airport, in this month, we have about 2,000 people arriving every day. That is still a very low level. But compared to a few hundreds every day previously, there is a marked increase. And I can say that since the beginning of 2020, that is, the beginning of uh, COVID-19 outbreak, it's a high level. From the arrivals at Hong Kong, there is a group that is very important. I can say that they are essential to Hong Kong people's lives. They are foreign domestic helpers. Starting from the 1st of April, we have removed the flight ban on nine places so far over one and a half months uh, till the 15th of May. We have over 10,000 foreign domestic helpers arriving in Hong Kong. That itself is a great relief to a lot of households in the help of taking care of their elderly and their young. But I'd like to issue an, a reminder. There are some indicators that may cause concern. First, is the effective reproductive number, that is, an infect how many people will an infected person infect? As long as it's under one, as I said, we don't need to worry, but the latest number is very close to one. That is a result of increase in movement of people. So we can expect that with every relaxation and with more people moving about, the effective reproductive number will climb up, as especially when we have um, a static number of cases. With a steady number of local infections and an increasing effective reproductive number, then the number will continue to climb. That that number, reproductive number, may become more than one, but there is no need to worry. Another reminder I'd like to issue is to get vaccinated. As I said, that we have to protect our healthcare system. We have to keep the number of serious cases down. And the most effective way is vaccination. Currently, the vaccination rate, especially in the elderly group, has room for improvement. So the Secretary for Civil Service has racked his brains to try to find ways to boost the vaccination rate. And that's not just the first the sec or the second dose. We're talking about a third dose as well. Well, the other matter I'd like to talk about is the reorganization of the government. Last week, I have said here that uh, we have a very tight schedule. We hope that today uh, the proposal will be submitted to the to the EXCO on the 17th of May. Normally, we will not disclose the agenda of the EXCO, but this is a matter close to all your hearts. So I can confirm that in Today's EXCO meeting, we will discuss one item, that is, the proposal made by the CE elect on the uh, organization and structure of the sixth term of the government. I myself and my government will be very happy to uh, dovetail our work with that of the CE elect if it is endorsed. Then we will issue electrical papers and um, and disseminate a press release. But at this moment, it's uh, not in a position to disclose any further details. Now the floor is open. Raise your hands. Identify your media outlet and use the microphone we give you. Uh, please limit your number of questions to two and no supplementary questions. The one in the middle at the front. Good morning, Mrs. Nam. First, I'd like to ask about the epidemic. There are experts saying that in the coming few weeks, the number of cases will increase. 
Will it affect uh, our roadmap to resumption of normal activities? Mr. Uh, Mr. Cowling of Hong Kong U said that, um, well, you will have to start thinking about living with the virus. Is it the case that in order to get the border open, we have to maintain dynamic zero, or would you consider how to live with the virus? In relation to reorganization of the government, uh, what's the chance of the exco endorsing the proposal? And what's the view of Mr. Lee? Is his, uh, well, is there any room for adjustment compared to your original proposal? Uh, can you give us any idea about what the government structure is going to be on the 1st of July? I'm from TVB. No. I'm from Now TV. I noticed that there are different views from different experts. And it shows that, um, well, it is a fluid situation with a if it is a surge of number of cases, then they may share the same view. They may say that we we'll need to uh, do certain things, say, for example, vaccination. But at the moment, the number of cases is static. That's why we have diverse views. I do not want to comment on the views of individual experts because the government has their own views. But I'd like to emphasize that in our fight against the epidemic in the past two years or so, I personally thank the valuable views from experts. But as they say, they do not directly, they are not directly involved in the formulation of government policies. Say, for example, uh, when there will be social distancing measures, when the relaxations will be, and what are the um, prevention of importation cases uh, it is about what they give us their views and we do we are not led by their opinion we will balance a basket of factors say for example the uh, economic needs the needs for re as resumption of normal activities before we make a decision to come up with the most appropriate solution uh, the most appropriate approach opening the borders is our first and foremost objective. As I said last week, in order to open the border again with the mainland, we have to restart discussions. At the end of last year, we were very close to reaching um, a common basis for opening of the borders, but and that will be our starting point. Regarding the reorganization proposal, it's not appropriate for me to make any comments here because it is going to be discussed by the EXCO. But I can say that the CE elect has said many times that he inclines towards accepting the proposal I made in the policy address and something that I uh, dis I announced at the beginning of the year, that is, uh, with uh, three chief secretaries and 15 policy bureaus. That will be the blueprint, but there are other suggestions as well. So I ask for your patience. I am confident that uh, after discussion by the ESCO this morning, it will be endorsed. Time's tight. But if it takes another week for endorsement, I'm afraid that it might have an impact on our goal to complete all formalities and procedures before the end of June. These procedures and formalities include um, going through the LegCo. As far as I know, that uh, they've set up a subcommittee uh, which will be convened this Friday for the first time. The subcommittee will have to do two things. First, in relation to the establishment subcommittee and the finance, a committee, they will have to endorse funding approval involved with the reorganization. The other thing that they like they have to do is to endorse a government re resolution at a council meeting. We hope that we will be able to complete all is necessary before the um, before mid June or end of June. Next, the um, lady in the. Good morning. I'm from Cable News. According to the experts, we shouldn't um, 
try to boost the vaccination rates anymore, especially for those about uh, um, below uh, 60, because um, the fatality cases and the serious cases um, are mostly elderly people. So what is the uh, government's position? Are we, are we going to boost the um, vaccination rates anymore? And what's the uh, justification? Second question, uh, the, um, Cardinal Joseph San uh, was arrested by um, the um, police um, NSL departments. So as a Catholic yourself, um, how do you feel about this? Are you going to pray for the Cardinal? On your first question, like I said, I don't want to comment on individual experts' view. I reiterate, vaccination is still um, a crucial tool in fighting the epidemic. Even if you are vaccinated, you will not be totally immune from infection. So we are seeing more patients who have been vaccinated, um, as many as three doses. As we said at the very beginning, vaccination is not a means to prevent infection, but a means to reduce serious uh, complication or even fatality after infection. That is well proven. Even if we have cases, we have um, very few critical cases. So there are only two COVID patients in ICUs. From this perspective, everyone should be vaccinated because you never know when you go out to buy takeaways and um, when you eat outside, you may get infected. If you are vaccinated, it will be mild and you will recover soon. So we will continue to implement the vaccination program. In other words, uh, by the 31st of May, um, we will implements the next stage of the vaccine pass, that is um, three doses. For all eligible population um, aged above three, um, only 50% have been um, vaccinated with three doses. So we have to continue to provide um, incentives um, to get people vaccinated. Second, that is about um, the rule of law. There is no person's um, sentiments are involved. Hong Kong is a rule of law. Uh, is a law-based uh, society. This, um, regardless of your age, uh, gender, religion, as long as you are suspected of having contravened the law, the um, law enforcement agency will take actions. There will be no um, regard to the person's background and occupation. It's about how the law is written and what evidence um, the departments have. In the end, the Department of Justice will have to make an independent decision to prosecute. And then the um, independent judiciary will uh, make a, a judgment. Thank you. Let's take the last question. The lady in brown. Slam, this is from SCMP. So um, uh, first, have you reached a consensus with John Lee on the details of the restructuring plan? Is there a possib possibility that some principal officials will have to stay on, uh, stay on for some time in the next term because time is pressing for CE-elect to form his own team? And second, uh, with, would the government proceed with the foot freight uh, Third phase of vaccine pass when around a million people eligible for third shot still haven't been taken their third shot. Yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll answer the uh, second question first because I have just uh, referred to uh, the uh, government's commitment to the vaccination program. Now, uh, vaccination uh, remains the most effective uh, way to prevent um, a serious illness arising from COVID-19 infection. And if we could keep uh, this uh, situation, then we will not be overburdening the Hong Kong public hospitals. And that has always been one of the primary objectives of our anti-epidemic uh, work in Hong Kong. So uh, with uh, that objective in mind, um, we will continue to uh, implement what we have announced for a very long time. So we are not suddenly requiring uh, Hong Kong people to take the third dose before you could uh, enter restaurants or uh, gym and other venues. We have been telling people and announcing well in advance the three dose requirement under the vaccine pass. So uh, uh, we, I, can, I can confirm and reaffirm here 
that that remains our plan. So on 31st May, then people will have to uh, have uh, proof of uh, having taken three doses before they can enter their premises. Unless they have a medical reasons or they are recovered uh, patients, then there will be some special arrangements. Now, um, on the first question, uh, let me put it uh, in a, a very, a very um, uh, absolute way. There is no question of myself and the chief executive elect reaching a consensus uh, or as you put it, a consent. There's nothing that the CE elect needs from me in terms of consent or approval. My role is to facilitate the next term chief executive to have the best and optimal government structure to enable him to discharge uh, what he has promised the people of Hong Kong. Uh, I said this well before uh, the elections. I announced in my policy address last year that this uh, proposal on restructuring uh, was not done for myself, it's for the government. Uh, but based on my experience, uh, especially as a, with the experience as the chief executive, I thought something needs to be changed in terms of a government structure. So I offered some initial ideas in my October 2021 policy address. And thereafter, we, um, we talked to people, we received um, uh, recommendations from um, community from Legislative Council, and that has uh, given rise to a set of very detailed proposals uh, which I announced on the 12th of January 2022. Uh, that is to increase the number of policy uh, bureaus uh, from 13 to 15, uh, and so on and so on. And since then, uh, we have received a broad uh, support for the set of proposals. So this then forms the basis uh, for the chief executive elect to consider. Uh, if he felt that this was not the right approach, he could throw it away and start afresh. Uh, but on this occasion, uh, John Lee uh, felt that he agreed uh, with the entire package. So uh, what we are putting to Exco this morning will include uh, the full um, components uh, of uh, government restructuring that I announced uh, in January this year. Um, but I, I can also uh, uh, tell you that there will be other proposals. Uh, it will not be just uh, the set of proposals uh, put forward by the current term of government. And this is only natural because each chief executive will have his own governance style. And so, and having regard to the aspirations of a people and the priorities that he has set for the next five years, it is only natural for him to come up with more ideas on how to restructure the government. Um, my job is to facilitate the approval for a new government structure. I'm not involved in the, uh, identifying the candidates to fill the various positions in the political team. So uh, whether that could be done in time, I don't know. Uh, you have to ask the chief executive elect. But it will be very unusual to invite the existing uh, politically appointed officials just to fill the gap and stay on for a few months because they are not the civil servants. Their term uh, um, is entirely the, my term. It's a five-year term. So I, 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 I hope that would not be uh, the situation. And I have every confidence that uh, John should be able to find all the right people to fill the various uh, positions. Thank you very much.